Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a uh, cute little video showing you how I work with felt. So I cut all these pieces out on the Cricut Maker and I use my fabric mat and my rotary blade to do all of this. The only piece that I had a hard time was with the mouth. So I'm using the Roxanne basting glue and I'm using the Sue Daily board. So we're just going to jump right into this video and get started. And this is just a little piece of board here and it's got um, sandpaper on it and I like it because while you're working on this felt or wool it's going to keep your pieces in place. So I highly recommend this board. Um, I got mine from the Missouri Quilt, uh, Missouri Star Quilt Company and I order from her online. Um, absolutely amazing place to order from. I'm going to tell you the experience to order from that place is unforgettable. Super sweet people. Okay, so um, what I'm doing is I'm taking my needle, I'm taking my clear thread, and this is just a basting needle. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking my needle and I'm coming from underneath here. I'm trying to stay real close to the, um, the little black here. See how I'm coming up right there? And I will come right back down on the black. So what I'm going to do, once I get this down on my quilt, I'm just kind of wanting to show you guys piecing them together. Um, I am going to take it on my machine and stitch all the way on the outside. So I'm not too concerned to come on the outside. But on the inside pieces, I really want to make sure that they are held down. So I'm going to go ahead and come through this one more time. Um, and Sue Daly makes a needle for this. It's a number nine. And I actually would recommend using that one. These are just the basting needles from Walmart. So I definitely recommend using that one. It probably would not leave as big a hole as this one is. So just this clear um, nylon thread. So I'm going to go ahead and that looks good to me because I'm going to stitch around the rest of that with my machine when I get it on my quilt. So what I'm going to do on the back side here, I'm going to just come through a little sliver of the back here, come through here, and I'm going to make my way, try to, I shouldn't have made this as long, I won't do that again in a minute. Okay. So, kind of made it a little bit difficult to work with. So, I'm going to actually come through my string here. And there we go. And just kind of pull all this tight just to make my little knot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. Because that looks good to me. So, that's what we're going to do. And you're, you'll just keep doing that all the way around. So, I would go ahead and tie this, um, I still have plenty of string here, so I would just tie it again. And I would start and do the whole inside of the tire. Like I said, I'm not concerned about the outside because that's gonna be stitched down on my quilt. Now, if you weren't doing that, then you would wanna go ahead and stitch around the outside too, just to keep it in place. Um, same thing with this tire. So that one was a super easy one because it was just technically four little pieces. So there's our tractor. So see what I mean with this board here? It just kind of holds everything in place. It is awesome for this. Okay, so we're going to put down our black piece first. And then before we glue anything down, we're going to go ahead and play with all this first to make sure where everything goes. So the next piece would be our white. So the only piece for this black was actually this little window, but it does make it more sturdy to have the extra... Um, to build that on okay so there is our red piece would go there and then um, you have our little white piece that would go around this piece here and our white piece for the window Oop. this may go in this oh no I see what I'm doing I'm gonna come back this way Put it upside down so that would go there and this is where I'm talking about like the tweezers here I use these Cricut tweezers you could come in with these tiny little pieces here and kind of move it around so I do like the little sharp pointy ones like I said this comes in the weeding tool set I like it for this any bit of a gap there you can see because that's where you're gonna have your white lines maybe just a little bit more up okay and then um, here is your last piece right up here so there is our barn. Baste this down. 
I'm going to just go ahead and keep the black down here. I'm just going to kind of work all the way around the edges. And I know there's going to be that little window, so there we go. That's good enough for me. And then I'm going to come in with my next layer. I'm going to very carefully line this up. That looks good. There we go. So we're going to push down on that. Then we're going to take our next piece right here. But with this red, so I'm going to move these little pieces over here. So we know where they're going, though. I'm going to put it on the back side of my red here. Kind of just getting it down a little bit. And this is just so while we're working with it, um, everything can kind of stay in place and not shift while we're trying to um, sew them together okay so there is that and if you want to give it a little bit of pressure this is where those little clips will can, can come into play and see and I can actually see that this needs to go over this way just a little bit you can use your little um, tweezers here to kind of fuss it over just a hair so see how good that worked out and then I can kind of bring it down so there is that. Now, this is where the clips can come into play. So you can go ahead and take, um, I have nothing over here in the corner, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my clip and clip that down. And I'm just gonna go right on the back side here and get it right down really quick. There we go. And I'm gonna use my little tweezers to fuss it over. There we go. Looks good. So now I'm going to kind of let that dry just a little bit. So while that's drying, I'm going to... Now what I'm going to have to do is, um, the Cricut did not cut his little mouth out. It basically cut a mouth on the thing, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain. So I'm going to save his eyes and stuff for last. They're going to go on this little piece here somewhere. So I'm going to need to figure out exactly where they're going to go. And I'm going to hand cut out a little mouth since... That's fine. The rotary blade literally cut out these tiny little dots. Look at those. Okay. So what we're going to do, I love this. I feel like we're playing with the uh, felt like we did when we were kids. So let me show you something really quick that I did. So I went in and I contoured his shirt. So now it's all together and solid. So it can go right on here like so. Now if I didn't contour it, you can see it actually cut it into multiple pieces and it wanted to cut out... Um, the little holes but it cut it into multiple pieces so if you go in and contour your pieces first and take out all those small cut lines um, you won't have this problem you will have to take our glue of course and now with felt the glue kind of wants to soak down in it so you want to kind of work quickly with this so there is his cute little shirt now this cowboy belongs to a different quilt and then the um, the farm one belongs to another quilt. You'll see those as I'll get a video up of those very shortly. Right across the shirt there, let's see. And I'm keeping my image open of this on the design space so I kind of know what I'm doing as I'm working. So let's see, I think it kind of goes maybe a little like this. Um... It almost seems like maybe I needed to scoop my shirt down just a hair. There we go. And we're going to move this back up here just a little bit. There we go. I think that's probably where that needs to be. Okay. There's that. So we're going to take his little pants. I'm going to, this time, since we're working with the small little legs, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit down here on his legs and set these down just like this. Now, as you can see, they're going to come up his, um, oop, actually, wait, see, this is where I knew I'd mess up on something, so we're going to take that off. We're actually going to need to do his shoes first. His shoes are going to go under his pants. Now, this is what I'm talking about with contouring. I didn't go contour, so you can see where it sliced, a little slice here, where it would be normally if you did that with paper. So you need to go in and contour to where none of these lines are here. Do you see? Hopefully you guys can see that. But it's okay. His shoes stayed together, so I didn't worry about it. Okay, so what we're going to do with his shoe, his little boots first, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue down on his foot here. Go ahead and get his first boot on. There we 
go. Then we're gonna do his next one. Pants on just like so. There we go. Little chaps here. And those are gonna go right down on top here. So I'm gonna get my glue on, of course. I'm trying to put it on a little thicker because it does soak up into that felt. So, so we're gonna put a little eye here. And this other little eye. Okay, so there's, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, these are the little scraps from the tires. I'm gonna take one of these and that's how I'm gonna cut his little mouth. Cause you're basically just needing to cut like a little half moon here a little bit. What if we did like a little mustache? Look how cute that would be. Maybe we could do some. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take his little head here and we're going to glue it right on top of his little body. I'm actually going to move this for a second. Okay. I'm going to put some glue down here. There we go. Then we're going to take our little hat, and our hat's going to come right up here. And let me put his little scarf back on here. A little bit of glue across here on the brim. Right there, maybe a little here. And this is gonna go like so. While I'm waiting for him to dry, I'm going to go ahead and move him out of the way. So what my plan is, is I'm actually gonna come up to hold these together. I'm gonna go ahead and just go around. Let's see if I can't get it where I need it to be. I'm trying to come in as close as I can towards this little barn door here. There it is. So I'm coming in right next to you. See it? I'm coming through the red here. I'm going to barely come in next to the white. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to come back down through the white. So this is going to, for one, hold all of our layers together. Because I'm not worried about stitching around, like I said, because I'm going to do that when I put it on my quilt. You could always use like um, a white thread, a matching thread, whatever you wanted to do. But I like to use the clear so you can't really see it. It's just going to continue all the way around. Get up with it. Okay, so I'm going to continue to work all the way around that. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm actually just going to stitch this down. I'm going to come through and probably uh, whip stitch around this just a little bit in the inside just to make sure that's going to stay over time. Um, because with washing your quilt and stuff like that, then I'm going to stitch all the way around, um, this piece here. And then, um, I will, because see, like I said, with the quilting, I'm going to come and I will go all the way around this with the quilting. Um, and I'm probably going to go ahead and zigzag around these areas as well. So I'm not concerned about any of this being sewn down, but at least with me doing this piece and this piece, it does connect all the pieces together so um that's how that will be my tractor here i'll be flipping it on this side and i will put some heat and bond so i'll put some heat and bond here and then um carefully kind of uh trim around that heat and bond i will uh, get it ironed on and then trim trim around um and then i would um, iron this guy down I would get them both ironed on with the um like i said the heat and bond then i would take it over to my sewing machine and um, I would, and I'm going to use light iron, um, the lighter heat and bond because you don't want it to be too thick for your sewing machine. Um, then I would take and I would take a zigzag and I would stitch all the way around these on top of this fabric. But um, so that's how you would use the Cricut Maker to um, cut out your felt pieces, and um, and then I use the um, Sue Daily board to piece them all together as well as the Roxanne base glue. So I hope you guys found this helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one.